All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming by. It's Chris Petri. We're back again here, and we're doing a beautiful, gorgeous house painting. This is in uh, the Northeast uh, United States. This is like a beautiful um, colonial-style house in Vermont, which is in the Northeast of the United States. Um, we're going to have fun. We're going to cover every step of the way here, how we're going to draw this. We're going to do a preliminary sketch first, like a rough drawing of it so that we get the feel of this design of the house, which has kind of got a really somewhat simple design. It's a, it's a rectangle, basically, with a triangle on top of the rectangle. And then we do have some angles up here on 45 degree angles on the roof here. And then we have another triangle over here where the entrance uh, to the house is, the entrance door. But trust me, this is kind of a simple design that we can all do together. We're going to have fun together doing this. I'm going to explain every detail along the way so you won't have to worry. And then if you want to skip ahead and you don't want to go through all the details, that's fine too. I'm also going to show you a couple little um, workaround ideas that you can do for this uh, style painting so that if you don't really want to use all of the methods that we use with rulers and measuring and things like that, you can use the tracing method, which I covered in other videos and I'm going to cover in the future. But for the most part, enjoy this painting. Have a wonderful time. Take your time with it too. Chances are if you just um, work along with us here, step by step, hit the pause button, when you have to, to, so you can catch up and do things as we go, you should have no problem. You should be able to do this with us and get a really good result. So don't worry about it. And the fun part of the painting is the actual watercolor washes when we do the final painting of this beautiful composition here, of this beautiful colonial house. So uh, let's not delay. Let's get started. We'll get into the details, everything here, the um, sharp details you need, all the factoids, and uh, the whole enchilada and oodles of information that uh, you need to uh, get this thing done. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we just uh, saw the finished painting, and uh, we're going to get started here. The let's do the reverse engineering uh, idea here. So we look at the finished painting. We say, how did we get to that? Um, finished uh, composition and then simple enough we just kind of we'll go through the steps now we'll start right from the beginning and just kind of work our way right through and uh, the first thing you know it's a beautiful uh, quaint house here in uh, the northeast United States of uh, Vermont it's a beautiful uh, colonial style house we're gonna try to take this photograph here which I found online kind of simplify it a little bit you can kind of see maybe uh, from this video that the um, the house is on a little bit of an angle I want to try to make this maybe more of a um, two-dimensional uh, drawing and painting. So I'm going to take the angle and just make it straight. So the, the house is on a little bit of an angle. Uh, I guess the person that took the picture maybe took it from an angle. So I'll try to um, just simplify this a little more and make it level, the bottom of the house level, the bottom of the foundation level. And I'll keep the um, all the features of the front of the house, the front of the um uh, the front elevation, I'll kind of keep that the same so that it kind of looks all even and level across and uh, looks somewhat like a uh, architectural rendering maybe uh, on like blueprints or um, maybe like a photo simulation of a house maybe. Um, so let's do that. Let's start out. I'll just take a piece of printer paper just so I can kind of maybe work it out first with some just a pencil and some sketch lines just to kind of see if I can get the feel for this of how I want to do this um, before I just go ahead and just start right in and do my drawing. So the first thing I'll do is a preliminary kind of sketch here. So I'm kind of looking at this and I'm saying, well, basically it's a rectangle, uh, like a large rectangle, the uh, front uh, elevation of the house. So what I can do is I can kind of take that idea and just say, okay, let me do a, let me do a, a rectangle like this. And then this would be the, the front uh, lawn area and foundation area of the house. And then uh, I can see it's two floors, so I can kind of take the, the uh, a super light pencil line just across so that I know it's two floors. So I'm gonna have um, windows on the lower floors and the upper floors, the first and second floor. Then I'm looking at the, uh, let's say, let's get the roof, um, 
the roof uh, pitch and the kind of like the basic design of the roof and that looks like it's a hip roof over here so it slopes up like this and then it goes across I do that real lightly because there is another gable feature here that goes across the front and um, I can kind of see that this looks like it pretty much it kind of I'll simplify it a little bit and we'll just come down like this like this so that's pretty much the shape of things and then I can go with a little darker line so you can kind of see that's the shape of the house for the most part the basic shape which is a rectangle like this and then a roof going up with about a 45 degree angle for the roofs here so you can see they slope up like this level across here even with these lines so these are all level lines and this one goes down about it's the same pitch as this one here and that is the basic shape of the main structure of the house then you have a um, on the second floor you have a gable which is in the center and it rises above the roof so that breaks that roof line there a little bit like that and that's a simple triangle on top so again you see you can kind of see here it's kind of simple shapes a rectangle and then you just have a pitch going up like this and a line angling up like this like on a 45 degree you know kind of in between a 90 degrees so 90 degrees is here zero here 90 degrees 45 45 degree angle here 45 degree angle here and we have an additional floor up above here this might be like a um, attic area space here and for storage and things and then again we have the gable feature here in the front on the second floor and um, at that point the windows do kind of go up into that gable area a little bit they kind of rise up into that gable area just a touch in comparison to these windows here so you can see these windows here are tucked up right underneath the us uh, uh, fascia boards here these are fascia boards that run along here and then you have your gable feature here these windows here and shutters kind of they go up a little bit into this section here the gable area so they do um, sort of rise above this fascia area here a little bit so we're going to make sure we capture that we want to do that and then over here let's say we'll go down to the first floor and then we have another gable feature on the first floor where the entryway is and there's a gable roof with a porch a small porch and a front entry door so let's do that let's kind of take a look and say all right where is this um, gable roof here um, in relation to the main structure that we just built which was the rectangle with the roof and the gable here so we kind of see that the point of this gable roof is a little bit beyond this here over to the right so about here so we take that we take that that uh, hash mark a little bit over from here and we come down and that's about where that point of that gable roof is and it's about a good distance above about halfway almost halfway quite not halfway yeah, it is actually it's about halfway between the first and second floor so about there and then this roof is a little bit of a softer pitch here it's not quite as steep as this one here not quite 45 degrees this is a softer pitch on this roof and it goes out and beyond over here like so and it goes about here so we can kind of see we'll get our second gable roof here which is our entryway and we'll get that triangle there like so then we'll get our posts that come down like this just to kind of let's just kind of get these things working for us here and then we can kind of build this first and then we'll transpose it onto our watercolor paper once we feel this out so now we can kind of see we have our porch here the front porch with the overhang and the gable roof 
there's a, a raised porch here. And then there's a front entry door right here on this side over here. Like that. Looks good. Then we can start working our way over here and we'll just kind of get a feel for this. This is the shutter and window here. And another shutter there. Just I'm going to rough it out over here. Shutters and a window. Just like this, I'm doing this kind of quick. I'm just trying to rough this out. I'm not trying to do a perfect drawing here. Okay, these second floor windows are tucked up right underneath the uh, fascia of the uh, second floor where the roof is, where the roof meets the walls of the house. And then they're going to be in the same alignment as these windows below here. So you're going to have the same um, configuration for the windows above and below. So you just line them right up so that they're even, plumb. So you're running a plumb line straight up, and that's going to be your shutters like that for these two. And then we're going to come over here and we have these windows. There's two windows here. And again, they are tucked up just a tiny bit. So let's get those two shutters here and here. And then we'll do our windows like so. And the two shutters are right next to each other like that. And there you have it. So you have your windows and shutters all the way across. And then we have one more over here. This is a line here. So the house has a wall here. And then it steps back a little bit, back over here. And then you have a window over here. like this. And that is pretty much the uh, overall basic layout of everything. And then there's a bush over here. There's a bush over here. You can kind of sketch, sketch these in as you go, you know, just to kind of get a feel for the what we're going to be painting. You have trees over here like so, like that. You might, we have some trees hanging down up here from above. Let's get a few of those in, like that. Then over here too, we do have a chimney. Let's make that chimney over here. And it goes up pretty high, like so, like this. And then we have a couple of chimney pots there. That's the chimney brick chimney like that and it's on the other side of this wall so you really don't see that too much it might we won't worry about how exactly it sits behind this area but it does sit behind this wall here so that should be fine and we have our double hung windows here so you have they're split in two up and up and down and then I think um, they might have some they might have some uh, grills in there some grills you can make them with or without grills it's up to you and then you have your front door entry door like this and we might have a, a front entry light here Or you might make your entry light a little different. Maybe we'll make our entry light over here next to the door like this. Like that. But I think that looks really good. And that is pretty much the... And this is the front sidewalk that goes up to the... the uh, house and you have your front lawn here there's some shadows here from the trees we'll do some tree shapes up here 
like this. Some shadowing here. There's some shadowing on the walls. This roof is dark, so we'll make sure we get a nice dark roof area. So this is what you might want to do before you go in and uh, do your drawing onto your watercolor paper. Maybe you do a nice, simple sketch like this just to get the feel for it of everything. And then once you do this, um, it's going to be a lot easier to go in and draw and sketch onto your watercolor paper. So you do a first sketch like this, you take a break, then you come back and you put this across from you on your table, in your, you know, on your, um, in your, wherever you're working, whether it's your living room, dining room, kitchen, kitchen table, uh, your bedroom, wherever you like to work and do your, uh, your basement, wherever you like to do your artwork, your sunroom, however you like to paint, wherever you like to paint, you set this sketch, once you do this sketch, just to get the basic layout like we just did from the photograph, you set that across from you. And then when you go in and you start doing your sketch on your uh, drawing on your watercolor paper, you already have done it once and you kind of have the feel for it. And then it'll come out much better and you won't have a tendency to start erasing and kind of having maybe a little bit of an issue with get, getting this onto the paper. So that's really the real simple nuts and bolts of it. That's the preliminary sketch, really. The preliminary sketch. And we're going to do another light sketch here first. And if that goes well, we'll just leave it like that and we'll start painting. But if we need to adjust anything, we can do that too. But just remember, you can't go wrong with doing a preliminary sketch first. And you could do this a day or two ahead of time. As long as you can get this done before you go in and do your painting, you're going to be much better off. So this might take you an hour to do. Or, you know, uh, half 45 minutes to an hour, maybe an hour and a half. It depends how, how much experience you have with drawing. But if you can get this done first to get the basic overall shapes of what you're doing much better off and then this one you go in you're you know you're starting to draw on your good watercolor paper now you want to have already tried to do this sketch one time and get things laid out the way you want them and then you can set this across from you on your table or you can tape it up on your easel if you work with an easel however you work kind of keep this across from you since you already did this you'll you'll use this for your reference and you'll also use my video here for reference too because i'm going to leave this up here on my uh video here as we go. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break. We did work for the last 15, 20 minutes on this uh, sketch. So let's do that. And even if you wanted to, you can even go a little bit of an extra step and um, maybe you can get a darker China marker possibly and uh, darken up this roof here like so. Like that, and then maybe darken up some shutters. So you can do that too. Kind of helps you to really key in on the darks and lights of your your sketch and your painting. Obviously, you're going to paint in these darks that we're seeing here. So that's where you have these really nice darks here. And we have these really nice dark bushes here in front by the front entryway. Like that. And you can kind of see that this is really a great way to um, lock it in solid with your um, your preliminary work that you're going to do before you go in and do your drawing and painting so that you really have a nice feel for this and then at this point you're ready to go like that and this is a good so you have a triangle a triangle here, triangle here, a rectangle here, a rectangle here, sort of. And then you have a 45 degree angle approximately here for the roof, uh, hip roofs over here. And then again, your uh, triangle here and triangle here for your two gable roofs here. You have your chimney over here. And then you have a little bit of your bushes and some trees and you'll paint those in later so you don't have to do anything really with those too much. You just kind of rough some stuff in there just to kind of make yourself aware that you are going to paint some trees and foliage and foliage in here like that and you have some sky back here too all right let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll start pencil sketching this right onto the watercolor paper so i'll be right back in a second all right welcome back again and we're going to get uh, started with our preliminary sketch and our uh, drawing Pencil drawing on our watercolor paper. Again, we just caught up to speed here with 
doing a quick uh, rendering of this beautiful quaint house in the Vermont region of the northeast of the United States. Uh, the um, northeast is a beautiful area in the United States, actually very um, uh, beautiful, lots of gorgeous architecture, um, turn of the century architecture, um, beautiful farmlands. Um, Coastal areas are really beautiful too as well along the northeast coast of the United States. So just a beautiful area. I've been up there quite a few times in my travels with work and um, also with um, uh, some vacations and things like that. So I can vouch that this really is a great beautiful area and there's a lot of homes up there. Uh, homes for sale. Actually, once in a while I browse through the houses for sale up there just to kind of see what's uh, available up there. Maybe someday I'll move up there. It's such a beautiful area. I'm not sure, but... In any case, um, we're going to just do this gorgeous house here, have fun with it, kind of see uh, how we can develop it. It's not really that difficult. It's a beautiful house, and uh, it's got some really striking features, the beautiful black shutters, the black roof, and then um, the white uh, clapboard siding on this. Uh, I think it's just a gorgeous, beautiful house, and it's fall too, so we're going to have some of those fall colors here uh, in the painting. So you're really going to have a great time doing this with us here together. And um, so let's keep working on it. So again, I'll put my sketch across from me here. And then again, I just wanted to mention that I did use this pre-cut mat to make sure that I was making my painting that we're doing here large enough that if I put a mat over the top, I have enough room to move my mat around a little bit. And you can kind of see if I was to go around with a pencil where I taped off my paper. So we'll do that. I'll take some pencil and go around where I taped off my paper. So I taped off my paper here. You can kind of see if I put my mat over the top, it covers it beautifully. And I even have a little bit of room to wiggle around on there so that when once we're done with our painting, we can take a mat, pre-cut mat that fits perfectly in a uh, sized frame. So you don't even have to worry about if you're going to be able to work it out with a frame you might want to purchase. You can go right to your big box stores, you know, your Michaels and AC Moores, and you can go online and buy frames and you can just order your frame. The, uh, the frame here would be basically frame size on this is, um, American standard is 11, 11 by 14. So an 11 by 14 frame, perfect. And then your window size on this is seven and a half by uh, nine and a half. So your window size here, seven and a half by nine and a half, and it's an 11 by, uh, I think we said 14, was it? Uh, 11 by, yeah, 14 uh, frame size. So as long as you have these, you pick up these pre-cut mats uh, online or in your big box stores, again, your Michaels, you know, you can go to your Blix online, all those great art stores that you know about, any place local by you that you have near you art stores or online, whatever you can find. If you can purchase a few different sizes of pre-cut mats, just like this, and then you leave them in your studio and you just use them every time you're gonna paint, you set them down and make sure your painting is gonna be a little bit larger than your window opening for your mats, for your standard sizings. So here's another one, it's a little smaller. You can buy maybe one, two, maybe another, maybe a smaller one than this. So you kind of figure out uh, maybe three or four different sizes that you like to work in. Maybe you have one a little larger than this one. You have one here. Maybe you have one a little smaller than this even. Yeah, you can do like a three by five. This is, uh, yeah, so this like a three by five would be like that. So a three by five would be like this. So maybe you get three different sizes and then a little smaller and you can work in small compositions and then you do a little larger medium size and maybe a little bit larger if you want to even go larger than that of course they have other sizes too as well much larger than this and they have you know two or three different sizes smaller than this too so you you create whatever size paintings you want to create but if you do get these pre-cut mats you purchase these ahead of time and you leave them in your studio and then you always work with them and you just leave them and they get spots on them and paint on them. No big deal. doesn't matter. You're just making sure that you're uh, painting when you're painting on your watercolor paper that you have your um, tape and your pencil lines large enough that you're able to set a mat over top and everything fits correctly. 
And that's all, that really is a big help. So let's continue. So we have our watercolor paper, we have our picture photograph here online, we have our sketch across from us, so we can use this. And we'll probably, I'm gonna use this mostly right here. I'll use this too and ref, you know, refer back to this, but I'm really mainly gonna use this because we worked on this a lot and kind of this is what I wanna use basically to get my uh, drawing done here. So what I'll do is um, I'll shift over to a mechanical pencil 07, uh, 0 0.7, and this is a Pentel uh, mechanical pencil, has the uh, retractable lead, so you just click on the lead and it comes right out. So you can just keep working. You don't have to worry about sharpening your pencil at all. And it does have an eraser if you need on the end there. And then I always have an kneaded eraser with me right next to my art table here, so that I always have that. And uh, let's get started. Now the first thing we kind of said was, in this painting, in this photograph here, and we're going to replicate this onto our paper, and we're going to use again this same idea here. We're going to have some uh, sidewalk here coming out and some front lawn area, so we do have to leave some area below our bottom of our house. So let's do this. Let's say that if we measure this, and I say this is eight inches. If I take eight inches and I start down here, one inch down at the bottom, approximately one inch here is the bottom of the house. One inch is the bottom of the house. Or actually, I'm sorry, one and a half inches. One and a half inches is the bottom of the foundation of the house. Then as we go up, the first floor is about three and a quarter to three and a half inches to the top of the first floor. And then to the eaves of the roof, we have about five inches. So those are your critical uh, measurements that you're going to have if you're using the same size paper that we discussed here just in the beginning of the video. So not to confuse things, um, you know, you kind of want to have it laid out correctly so that you fit your house into your picture just right and you have enough room underneath here so you have some front lawn and some sidewalk. So essentially that's how I did it. This is eight inches here from here to here. From the bottom and top of my painting is eight inches and then I went from the bottom of the painting up inch and three quarters that's the bottom of the foundation of the house then I went up another uh, three and a quarter that's the first floor right up the top of the first floor here and the bottom of the um, soffit area here in the entryway and then five inches up from the bottom five inches up is the eaves of the second floor roof line and then from there the roof pitches up. So that's my basic hash marks that I have to nail when I'm doing this drawing. Otherwise, I can really get off the mark and next thing you know I'm painting my roof off the page or off the painting. We don't want that. That's why I'm doing these hash marks here on the side of my paper. So please use these hash marks if you can and try to work things out this way. So if you do uh, use an 8 by what do we say this was? This was an eight, this is an eight by ten and a half, an eight by eleven sheet of paper. But the key is the paper is eight inches high. And then again, my marks were an uh, inch and three quarters to the bottom of the foundation of the house here. Inch uh, three and a quarter inches. So inch and three quarters, bottom of the foundation. Three and a quarter inches is the first floor, which is the underside of this entry foyer under here. And then five inches up from the bottom is the eaves of the second floor roof right up here where the gable starts up this way over here, this triangle. So if you can, again, get those hash marks on your painting, on your tape on the side over here, you'll be all the much better off because, again, that's the critical part of this painting really is when you're laying it out you don't want to run into problems where your house is running off the paper too high or you won't, don't want to have your house too low that you don't have some front lawn and front sidewalk because that really does look beautiful having that front lawn and sidewalk there to kind of lead your, um, uh, your eye into the painting where you kind of feel like you're walking up to the house so you have that sidewalk walking up and the front lawn it lo really looks good. You, kind of have to imagine that that really will look beautiful having that front lawn area here so we made sure to leave that uh, area here in the bottom of the painting. I know I'm going into a lot of details here but this is really important 
to get this part correct. And then from there, it's kind of pretty simple. So let's take this uh, inch and a half or inch and three quarters. And let's make an inch and three quarter mark over here, just so we have that mark over this side over here on the tape. And then we'll take our ruler and just make sure we get a level line across the paper. I think it looks good. If it's a little bit not perfectly level, that might be all right. It doesn't matter. Pretty, but pretty close to level. You, you would want that. So now you have your level line across. Now you're going to make a super light line, not really too dark, quite light, just in the middle over here. Just so you know, that's your first floor. And then these are the eaves of the second floor over here. Super light. You can, I'm not going to, you're not going to see it on the video, but I'm just putting it there so I can see it. Okay. And that's all you're doing is you're transferring over your hash marks you made with your measurements to make sure you have this house fitting perfectly within your rectangle here. Okay. And then you notice that the house is a little bit in from the left side of the um, rectangle. The house starts over here and it starts a little bit over to the right side over here. So that's another key thing we look at. Now the thing is here, I'm looking at this house and I'm noticing that I should probably make it a little bit closer in toward the middle because this is, can you kind of see how this is a square? This photograph is a square and I have this paper and it's a rectangle like this. So I'm going to need more space on the sides of my house. Otherwise, my house is going to be way too wide and when I go to start drawing this it's going to really throw me off. So that's where I have to be really mindful too that this is a square right here, this photograph, but yet I have a landscape or a rectangle on its um, long edge here which means I gotta leave a little more space on both sides. So let me do that. Let me make the house further in from the edges of the border in Toward the middle of this painting and I think we'll be fine if we leave it about here and here and uh, incidentally I'll measure those two uh, measurements so you have an idea inch and a half uh, approximately yeah, inch and a half inch and three quarters in from the edges and you should be fine to uh, create your two vertical um, edges of your house for the rectangle all right so now Let's get our rectangle in there. Simple enough. Let's do one line there, one line across here, one line down here, and there we have our rectangle. Perfect. Now we're going to, again, reference your sketch if you want, or if you're not working from your sketch and you just want to work from this, that's fine. Then we said the center of this Approximately the center is the gable roof. So, before we do the gable roof here, let's get our 45 degree angle hip roof over here, like this, and go across, and then come down like that. And you can kind of see how these are 45 degree angles. This is vertical, zero degrees. This would be 90 degrees, and this is halfway between 0 and 90 degrees, is 45 degrees. So this is 45 degrees approximately. And uh, now we're going to get that center uh, gable feature here. So let's, this is about center. You can, you don't have to guess. You can say, okay, what is this? Seven inches is the width of the house across so three and a half is center so I was pretty close right there that's the center mark of the front facade of this house and then we're going to go up here and we're going to get our gable feature let's get a small ruler now so I'll use a smaller ruler here and I just want to do a pretty steep um, triangle here like that and try to keep it even both sides like that. And you can measure out from the center and say, what is that out? Three inches, or three, uh, three centimeters. And then over here, three centimeters. Okay, so I was a little bit 
off there by a centimeter. That's a lot. So make sure you kind of get your same measurement out for your triangle like that. That can really throw, throw us off. Let's not let that happen. Okay, so there we go. Perfect triangle there. And then I can erase that center mark like that. That's fine. You can still leave a dot there for the center mark. Okay, now, what next? Let's see. Let, we're going to get our front entry foyer and uh, front entry gable roof here. And then what we said was that this gable roof here, this lower gable roof over the entryway, is a little bit in from the outside, or from the uh, point of this triangle coming down. So it's actually almost right. So if I transfer this mark down this way, seems a little bit much. I'm going to go over here. So I'm going to take this line here, which is the upper gable roof here, go down with a straight line down, a plumb line down like this, and then go over about mm, half an inch. And that's probably my center mark for my entry foyer. And then I'm going to take a soft I might even use my ruler here. And what I notice is, don't be afraid to erase a little bit. I'm noticing that this gable roof actually that is quite a bit higher in this. It's about halfway up between the second and uh, top of the fascia boards here and roof, it's about halfway up. It's about more like here. So let's just do a light sketch like this and see if we could do it this way. Sometimes slightly sketching it can work out better. That looks good. Okay, so that's about where we got to be. Like this. For this triangle. And you can see this gable roof here is quite a bit steeper than over here. This is much more the angle is way less, so that's... way less of an angle on that roof. And then we come down with our posts, like this, down to our... So we have some posts, and we have um, front stairs and a porch. I'll make a level line across there, just like that. Erase those lines a little bit. There we go. Okay, there's the stairs. Then we have our front door over here. Like so. Okay, and then we have our light fixture next to our door here. Always good to have some really interesting details. Let's have our light fixtures here. That looks good. And I put a little doorknob on the door here. And then we have some shadowing. Now, if it doesn't come out perfect, you don't have to worry. Please don't um, get too worried if you're, some of the features of your drawing and your painting don't look exact to the picture or the sketch we did. I think as long as we're somewhat, um, somewhat close to what we're looking at, we're going to be fine. So. I just made some of those fascia boards up here, rake boards actually. There'll be some shadowing under here. We'll do that when we paint. We don't have to worry. We'll have some shadows. Again, you can use your ruler if you'd like to, to make some of the trim features of your gable like this. These are the um, trim boards along this, um, these rake boards that are along the gable roof. And you have your fascia boards along the underside of the eaves of the roof here, so you can do those with a ruler if you like. 
and now we're pretty much, we've got a lot done so far. So let's take a quick break because when you do a lot of pencil work like this and measuring and angles, things like this, you really, why not take a break? Take a break for five or 10 minutes. That's what, that's what I usually do. I usually take breaks in between my, um, my sketch as I'm going, but I think we have a real good um, handle on this right now. Big help was doing that preliminary sketch like we did, which you can see here. That's a big help. Once you do this, it kind of just in your mind, you feel more comfortable going in and doing your sketch on your watercolor paper because you kind of already did it one time and you're a little more comfortable with it. And um, so we are pretty much in good shape here. I think what we have left is the windows and shutters on the first and second floor and um, the chimney we have to do. And other than that, I think we're pretty much good. So, and then we'll do some bushes and of course the front sidewalk, but I think we are quite a bit uh, of the way through this. So let's take a break and we'll come right back. And I'm really happy you're here painting with me and drawing and sketching. And we're gonna have a real fun time getting this completed. And you're really gonna see how we've simplified this. We aren't really suffering over all the details and, and like measuring every single thing that we're doing. We're just getting the basic overall idea of things when we start with the main rectangle of the house. And then from there, we did a couple measurements. We centered our triangle here, which is our gable roof here in the center of the house, which is a prominent feature of this home. And then also another prominent feature is this triangle here, this triangular shape, which is the um, foyer area over the front entry door. So there's like a roof here, a gable roof. And from that point, we uh, are in really uh, great shape. And again, we just have to do the windows and shutters next and then we'll do a little landscaping we'll draw a little bit of bushes and things and some trees and we'll be all set and we'll really zip through the rest of it and we'll have a ton of fun painting can't wait till we break out the paints right here we got them all ready to go let's give these a spritz of water because we're prepping the paint in just a few but i'm glad again you're here let's continue on having a good time um, don't worry about your sketching if you have to, you can always pick another photograph online and maybe do some uh, tracing. Um, we covered tracing in our last video this uh, last few days we did on my channel. I did some tracing, uh, showed you how you can use some acetate plastic um, paper. It's like a sheet, plastic, a sheet of plastic, actually. And uh, you can use that and trace over some of your architectural features if you wanted to. And then you can set it on top and maybe we'll do a video on that very, very soon. So here we're going to do some good old drawing with a ruler. We're using our ruler. We're doing some measurements. You can kind of see we're getting technical here. This is more of an expert type painting we're doing right now. But you can even, um, if you're not comfortable with drawing right now and you really want to do something like this, we'll show you how you can do it without having all the knowledge and expertise with rulers and measuring and things like that. So don't worry in the next coming weeks or so, we're going to cover a video where you don't need to be using all of your rulers and measurements and things like that, which get kind of technical. Um, so don't worry. We're going to cover you. We're going to get your back on that in, in a few weeks or so. We'll do another rendering of a house or a uh, building or something to that effect without having all of this uh, really uh, super find uh, details. Okay, so don't worry. We're going to uh, make sure everyone is happy here on this channel. And uh, let's take a quick break again, and we'll come back and we'll finish up with our windows and we'll get painting right away. All right, we're getting there. We actually have to finish up our windows. Let's get those uh, windows in and uh, then we'll get uh, painting. So we can kind of see that the windows over here on this section of the left side of this uh, facade of this house, pretty much they're in line with one another. So we can look at these and say, okay, there's about a shutter length or a little bit more than a shutter length um, between the edge of the house and the first shutter. So that's about here. And the shutters and windows are tucked up right underneath the eaves of this roof right here. And then they come over close to where this gable window, uh, gable feature starts. So I'm going to put the first window right here. So I'm going to do my two shutters and I'm going to draw these in, um, you know, not to perfection, obviously. I'm going to make the windows 
like this. And there's a little bit of white paint in between the window edges and the shutters, so we know we're going to leave that. And I'll make some... I don't think I'm going to put in... I think I'm going to leave these windows without the grills. So I'm just going to split the window in half and make it a double hung window, basically, with just a top sash and a bottom sash. And I'm going to leave it at that. Now we'll go down here below. Second floor, now we're going down to the first floor. And uh, I would say that's about where the windows are. A little bit below the height of the uh, soffit area underneath this entry foyer. So I'll put a quick line under there like that. It might be about the same height. And we're just going to transfer these lines right down here. So your shutters up here are going to be in line with your shutters down here. Like that, and once you get those two plumb lines going down, plumb, then you just draw in your shutters, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and then you get your window in, like so. So those are your two windows on the left, and then you split your window in half, to bottom, bottom and top sash of your window. You make a little bit of a white, uh, a little bit of a bar, like our, your sash between the two windows, leave some white paper in there when you're painting them. Then we'll come over here and do these two windows up here. So what I'll do is I'll go over here. I'll make... They're almost down to the same height, so they're about the same. Then I split them in half. Two. So I'm making two squares. And then I'm making two shutters on either side. Like that. And that's all. Just so I have something I know when I'm painting, I can put in some washes with the shutters and the windows, and I have the two windows in with the two shutters on each side of the window. That's fine. Then over here we have a wall going down here, like that. And then over here we have another window, which starts over here, like this. Like that, and another shutter over here. So that's basically the other window over here. Might be a little bit wider than the other windows. And then you have the edge of your house here. And that's fine. And then we have one more window over here next to the entry foyer. And I noticed that the Shutter is over here, right alongside this post for the entryway foyer. And then this is the other shutter over here. And you can kind of see how fun this is because these are really like very easy shapes, right? We're just drawing rectangles, like really elongated rectangles, squares for the windows. The sashes of the windows are basically squares. For the most part, square rectangles. These are elongated uh, rectangles, the shutters, and that's kind of simple to draw. You can use your ruler if you want to get them more exact. It's all up to you. You can make them more loosely and not worry about it and just kind of rough them in. Um, you can even paint them in and not even draw them in if you want to, but that's a little bit risky because this is pretty exacting when you're talking about a facade of a house. You really kind of have to have those details in there like we're doing. Otherwise, it might not uh, come out that pleasant and pleasing looking as far as a house, you know, look, looking at a house. You know, architecture is pretty exacting. It's all measured. Architects, engineers, they design everything. They make sure things are in certain uh, strategic locations to make everything look pleasant, pleasing looking, beautiful. And they also make everything structurally sound so that it all functions correctly in an uh, in uh, engineering standpoint so that everything is strong and it's a really well-built structure and a house. So that's how you're looking at this in a, in a sense that we, we wouldn't want to just kind of start painting and not really kind of key in on some of the really important details of how this looks because it really does make a difference and it is very carefully planned out by, again, architects and engineers when they create homes and they design homes. 
everything is very carefully thought out, planned out, measured, and um, structurally designed, you know, to uh, last a long time and be st strong and safe for the people that live in these homes. So let's continue on here. Let's get in our more uh, fun part now here. Let's do our uh, landscaping. Let's get our bushes in over here over on the left side of the stairs. And there's also some bushes over here on the right side of the stairs here. Let's get our sidewalk in. I know I made this porch a lot larger than it is on the photograph, but uh, that's how sometimes things work out when you're drawing. I can't always get everything perfect, as I say. So I will try to do the best that I can. And this is the sidewalk and some lines in the sidewalk. And then what else do we have here? We have the foundation. So you can put a line across the foundation where there's a little bit of concrete or cement blocks underneath there. So we can leave that. That's a good line to kind of make on the bottom of the house, the foundation. And that kind of uh, keeps it above the ground level so that the uh, siding and trim and things like that don't get uh, damaged by water and moisture. And then we can do a little bit of some very light lines. We're going to say that this has some clapboard siding, which is horizontal. So if you just put a couple little lines just to indicate that we have clapboard siding here on this house running horizontally across. And we'll just paint a couple of those lines in very, very faintly just so that it reads correctly as we're um, going through the painting when we're painting this. So let's get the um, chimney in here. So the chimney kind of sits behind this wall here. So let's kind of get the chimney in and it sits up pretty high, almost a little bit above the, the ridge line here on the roof. And let's do that. That's the chimney there. And then we'll corbel it out a little bit like so. And then we'll put a couple of chimney pots on top like that. And that should be fine there. Other than that, I think we're all completed. So we're pretty much ready to start painting. Let's take another quick break. Again, we did a lot of work here and you're gonna see how once we start painting this, we're not gonna be as exacting with our painting process. We can draw and sketch very, uh, you know, uh, exacting as we go. But then once you start painting, you can have more fun and you don't have to worry about being as like, you know, really critically exacting as you were when you did your drawing. But again, we did say, hey, it's real important. We want to get this drawing done really well so that when we go to paint, everything's going to work out great and we don't have any worries. We can just start painting. We know everything's in the right spot. Everything is drawn correctly here for the most part. Everything's in the right spot. Everything looks good. And then this way it's a lot more fun when you paint. You don't have to worry about maybe having to change something in the middle of your painting. We don't want to do that for certain. We always want to make sure that our pencil sketch is done well first. And then once you go in and paint, you're pretty much home free and you don't have to really worry about it. So let's again, take a look at this photograph. What I'll do is when we come back, I'm going to zoom in on this photograph that I have on my cell phone so that you can kind of see what I'm kind of thinking about when I'm doing my colors for this painting. But we're going to paint right now, actually in two seconds. Let's just um, take a break quick. I need a break for five minutes and then I'll come back. I'll show you this photograph close up. So we'll take this photograph here. We'll zoom into it and you can see the actual photograph we've been looking at. And then from that point, let me zoom in right now. So you can kind of see the actual photograph before we start painting. So you can see the colors and how we are going to approach this from a color standpoint. So you're going to see we're going to have some beautiful blue skies here. We'll do some beautiful blue sky colors. We're going to do some beautiful uh, autumn colors here in the trees. We're going to do some beautiful darks, some black, some really dark black colors for the shutters and the windows. Warm and cool colors everywhere though. We're going to mix in warm and cool everywhere. And we'll do some front lawn with some green grass and oranges and greens and some really nice shadowing under here. You can see the shadows underneath the foyer where the entry door is. That really looks nice. It looks a little bit dark right now on my viewfinder in my camera, on my video camera. It's a little lighter than what you're seeing right now. I can tell you that because I'm looking at this on my actual phone. 
So sometimes when we're looking at things, they look a little different when you're looking at it through the camera. But I'll tell you that this is a little lighter shadowing under here where the front door is, this entryway here. But, and the shadows are a little lighter too on the house. But in any case, don't worry about it. Take a look at this now. Hit pause if you want to right now so you can kind of study it a little bit, look at the colors, kind of look at everything. But you can see it's the white clapboard siding, which is really bright. Burst of bright light, beautiful white light um, siding on the, on the house, on the facade. And then you have those beautiful darks of the shutters and the windows. And then you have the really beautiful uh, trees, the f autumn colors and the green grass and oranges and leaves and things like that, the autumn colors all in the foreground. So this is going to be wonderful. We're going to have a fun time painting this. So stick with us here and we'll come right back in a few minutes and we'll get started with our painting. And we're going to do this in a la prima too. Okay, so I just had a quick break. I hope you took a break too. I always mention that uh, on my channel here, um, I, I will always advocate taking breaks. Um, the reason I say that is because sometimes when we're working for like 10, 20, 30, 45 minutes straight, sometimes our concentration levels can kind of get a little bit uh, weary. So that's why I do take breaks because I know myself anyway, my concentration level does um, sort of um, a weary after about maybe 20 minutes to a half an hour and I start to maybe lose uh, concentration a little bit. Everyone's different though. Some people I know can work for hours and hours and, and they don't seem to have any problem with concentration. That's fine. Uh, I tend to have a little more, um, I require a little more rest in between my, my, uh, uh, my work as I go through my sketches and drawings and my painting um, process. But uh, you figure out what you, you're the artist, you figure out what you need um, to um, uh, work at your own pace and, and figure out what's comfortable for you. Everyone's different. Obviously we're all different. So, um, I just, uh, tip my hat and say, you know, you're the artist, you decide what's good for you, but I do need breaks. And so that's why I took a break and, um, coming back here, we're going to look at, we can see here in this photograph, beautiful, bright whites for the uh, front of this beautiful, uh, colonial style house beautiful Vermont uh, area in the Northeast United States uh, region. Um, we have uh, an autumn type feel with some gorgeous uh, golden, orange, reds, greens, cool blues, and uh, some earth colors, some siennas, umbers, lots of beautiful colors in this. Shadowing, some nice purpley blue shadows with some warms in there too, some umbers and uh, siennas and things and ochres. So this is really a lovely painting. Let's get started with the colors and get the washes on here. And uh, we have some great darks too, some dark shutters, dark windows, and also our roof is kind of a black roof, which looks great too. So we're gonna have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna zoom back out since you have seen the photograph here. And I'll zoom back out so you see the full picture here like that. And then I'll set this up here like this in the corner, upper right corner. I don't want to get paint all over my cell phone if I can help it. I think I can work around that so you can kind of still see that there. And uh, let's uh, do what we always do. I'm going to um, let's do this here. We'll put down some uh, carpet, uh, carpet mat. This works great if you. Uh, it's you, you can usually uh, buy it. It's a drawer, drawer liner or carpet, carpet uh, mat that goes underneath like uh, throw rugs and things like that. You get that, and it kind of you tape it down to your working surface, and then nothing will slide around on you. And then I'll put my uh, sponge there. We have some fresh water. I'll get some fresh, clean water, actually. That water looked a little bit muddy. Let's get some fresh, clean water in here. And then we're uh, all set. We're, we have our paints all ready to go. I'm going to use my normal, uh, normal brushes that I might use, you know, doing my uh, 
paintings, I use some Kalinske sables. Maestros, I have some, uh, win uh, this is actually Da Vinci Maestros. Da Vinci Maestro, round brush number six, Raphael number six, sable brush, and then I have some Charles Reed signature series, um, sable brushes, beautiful brushes, great points on these. So between these brushes here, I also have a needlepoint brush, an Alvaro Cassignet needlepoint brush for really fine lines with our um, foliage and trees and tree limbs and stems and twigs and things like that. And also any fine details we might, might want to do in the architectural features. And I think that's about it. Maybe, yeah, I think we should be fine. You know what, but we're going to also introduce a couple of uh, flat brushes. So let's uh, grab a couple flat brushes here. This one here is quite small, but it really is um, pretty helpful if we're doing some square um, windows and shutters and trim. That really works good. And uh, we also have more of a medium size for this type of picture. This is a, actually a um, this is a Princeton Art and Brush Company uh, synthetic brush, but it's nonetheless perfect for the shutters. So if you can match up your if you can match up your size of your brush to some of the features that you're painting, you, you'll kind of find that you're going to actually have a lot easier time painting everything. So we'll use this for our shutters and our windows. And this one too, we can use this for some trim, maybe some trim areas with some shadows. So we'll use these two um, flat brushes as well. All right, so we have our brushes all set up and we're using Winsor & Newton paints and Holbein paints I use, my tube paints. And um, let's do it. Okay, first thing I want to do is I might use this brush too. This is another, this is a number 12 recab flat brush. Maybe we'll use that for the uh, larger sections. So now we're going to paint this in a la prima. You'll hear me talk about a la prima and glazing technique, the two techniques that are mainly I use as a watercolor artist. A lot of professional watercolor artists will always mention using either glazing techniques or using uh, a la prima techniques. Basically, the way I kind of view it and the way I really kind of employ those methods is a la prima means I'm basically going in and doing the darks first and then working all my darks and medium tonal values first and then doing my lightest washes last. Glazing technique is a little bit the opposite. Glazing technique is usually you're doing your light washes first, covering the whole paper, letting it dry, and then going back in and doing your darks and lights. So basically those are the kind of the two schools of thought with watercolors. A lot of artists use both of them simultaneously, which is myself. Um, at any given time, but I do kind of say that, you know, there is the difference between the two. And so now we'll do a la prima, which means we're going to start out with our darks and just start and start working into the painting. And then uh, we'll finish up with our lighter sky colors and light washes later at the, at the last part of our video or our painting. So let's get started. First thing I like to do is you always hear me say this on my channel, um, here on my tutorials is please please, please, let's mix up our paints first on our palette so that you don't have to worry about it when you're doing your painting. You want to make it as easy as possible to just go in and start painting and then work your whole painting all the way through until it's completed, for the most part, I should say. So the way we do that is let's mix up our colors first. Simple enough. Let's get our roof color, which is going to be French ultramarine blue and burnt umber and a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson. And a little more burnt uh, umber and some more lizard and crimson and some more French ultramarine blue. So we get a nice beautiful dark like that. Also, um, maybe we'll go in and get a little bit of the black, which is uh, 
ivory black and Payne's gray like that and then mix those t together like that okay that's going to be our roof color now you see what happens once in a while you'll have a problem where splashes occur while you're working don't worry about it blot it up with a tissue like that you'll never see this when we're done promise I promise you that you see these little spots here this will be a non-issue when we're done with this painting so never worry if you have problems with splashing or something like that when you're mixing up your paints or whatever okay so you have your darks for your roof and um, the shutters shutters as well we'll do in these these two you know this kind of mixture of the darks and then I think after that we're gonna mix some yellow ochres and raw sienna and raw umber and uh, some sap green and a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow and I think that should be good so there we go and then a little bit of cerulean blue too over here on the so if you can get the darks of the darks which is the roofs and the um, sh shutters and then we get the uh, greens for the trees and the foliage over here like this you're gonna have a really easier time kind of getting started here so let's do that let's get in here and start doing our darks which is our roof have fun with this let's have fun And you can kind of see how we're enjoying things like that. And I won't necessarily make everything perfectly as our sketches. Wow, how easy is that? When you have a flat brush like this, you can get your roof shingles in right away like this and we're really in good shape here. Let's do a kind of little bit of touches of shingles up here on the, the gable, the top of the gable roof here. Like that. And you'll be surprised now how wonderfully this will go for you. I don't know why my phone now is giving me a hard time. Okay, since we're doing our darks, let's continue. Let's get our flat brush now, our smaller flat brush, which is we said we would use for the uh, shutters and the windows. And that is a number six Princeton Art and Brush Company synthetic brush. So I don't necessarily always use sable or really expensive brushes when it comes to flat brushes. I have some of these inexpensive um, uh, synthetic brushes that work just beautifully. So I don't worry about it. And then let's, uh, I'm going to actually get some ivory black in here. Get these a little bit darker, and then we're just going to do our shutters. Look at how easy that is. One, two, three. Just have fun. Get your shutters in there like that. And go right down the line. Move it on down the line here like that. And let's do these down here too. Let's not uh, tarry. Let's get this going. Wow, look how, look at how, wow, that is fantastic. Look how much we did already. Now we'll get a little yellow ochre, maybe mix that in with the dark, and let's do our, our front entry door. And that's kind of dark, like this, like that. 
Gorgeous, look how good that looks. And since we're doing our darks, let's just keep pressing forward. Let's take these same darks and add a little bit of green, sap green and French ultramarine blue. French ultramarine blue and sap green. Burnt umber, lizard and crimson. French ultramarine blue and sap green. Some really, really good darks. And let's get our bushes in. Might as well get our bushes in over here. These dark, dark bushes that you saw in the paint, uh, in the photograph. Let's get them in there. And I turn my brush this way, not this way, but this way. And let's scrub on those bushes. And then you can, you know, you keep them light and uh, airy up here. And then as you come down this way, then you get them more solid. So they look more solid at the base of your bushes. And then up top, they look a little lighter. So you kind of turn your brush this way and just do some circular scrubbing. And you'll find that you really get some good, you get some really good effects like that. And then over here, same deal. Look at that. Some scrubbing effects up here. Then you turn it the other way and get more solidity over here on the bottom of your bushes over here, like that. Couple of splashes. I'll take some water, get some water in there. And then when I get some water into that mix there, See now these synthetic brushes are really hard to splash with because they're really, they don't hold a lot of water. Now I switch up the game here and I go and I grab my uh, travel, Charles Reed travel brush. These have a little, they hold a lot more water. Sable brush and I do some splashing along here. Okay. Add a little bit of darker tone up there on the door. And uh, we are really making great progress right here. And I do another little uh, bush over here. And then this one here I'm going to make taller, like a pine tree, because I want to kind of keep these all different sizes. Forgive me, but I want to change my game plan here and do things a little different. Always remember, you, you're the artist. You can create your own um, you can create your own effects your own changes in your what you're doing as far as your your composition goes so I wanted to make this over here a pine tree like this change things around, do what looks best for the painting. And again, my phone is giving me a really hard time. If you noticed before, my phone was not shutting off and now it's shutting off every other minute. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, I guess we'll just move it out of the way. And let's get in here and start doing our windows like this. Let's get the upper portions of the windows leaving some white between the shutters and the windows, like that. A 
a little bit of cerulean blue over here, a little bit of green. Let's get some greens and cerulean blue into these windows. You could, have, you could of course use the uh, square brush or the flat brush for your windows when you're doing this portion here, but uh, I'm using the uh, my round brush here. And I'm going to try to infuse in some gold colors everywhere. And don't worry about being perfect. Let things just happen as they will. Okay, so you can see how this really comes together when you do the darks first. So we just did our darks. Looks, you know, fantastic. We did our dark rooftop shingles. We did our shutters, our windows. We did our shrubs and our tree. We added in a little bit of a larger um, pine tree over here on the right side of the uh, entrance foyer. Now we're going to let this dry. So we have to take another break. And uh, that's the reason uh, I always say if you're taking breaks, you, you definitely will benefit from it. And the reason why we're going to benefit from it is if we let this all dry now, our uh, next washes that we're going to do, which are some shadowing and things like that, um, it won't wind up causing us too much of a problem with these other washes here that are still wet. So you can always Im imagine that when you're working with watercolor, one of your main considerations and your main focal points of what your technique is and your methods are is how wet are the washes on your paper right now so that when you're going back in and doing other washes and going in and doing other por portions of your painting, how is that going to intertwine with what's there already? So if you have a lot of wet washes still left on this paper and we start going in and doing other like shadow washes and things like that and continuing to work, it might affect us adversely if we start doing that, if these are still wet, these washes here. So we're better off letting this dry, whether you use a blow dryer in five or 10 minutes or whether you wait an hour and come back, it's up to you. Or you can wait till the next day or whatever. It doesn't matter. You could wait a week or two, but at least we have to wait at least like half an hour to an hour before we go in now, unless you use a blow dryer. If you use a blow dryer, then you can go back in within five or 10 minutes. You just have to make sure you dry this off good. So I'm going to dry this off with a blow dryer and come back in just a minute or two. And I always like to mention too, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below on the right hand side. All it means is you're just going to be kind of connected with me. So the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see my videos on your uh, home screen on YouTube. So you won't lose me. You won't have to go searching for me and say, oh, where was that guy that did that really cool painting of the house? Oh, gee, I can't find him. If you hit subscribe on the right hand side below, all it does is just make sure that YouTube will make sure they send you my latest videos on the side of your screen on YouTube. So it's not a bother or anything like that. It won't affect your um, uh, viewing on YouTube as far as whatever normal everyday stuff you watch on YouTube is concerned. So just a real humble uh, way that YouTube likes to make sure that you stay connected with me if you like my videos. And that's the main uh, key of subscribing. You just, you'll follow me and see what I'm doing on an ongoing basis. And we're here week after week, month after month, and year after year on my channel. I have hundreds of videos on my channel. You want to go back into the archives. A fun thing to do if you haven't uh, really researched it, but if you like, let's say, um, flower paintings. If you like flower paintings, let's say, if you type in my name, Chris Petri, simple. You type in my name, Chris Petri, into YouTube, and then you type in flowers, flower paintings, you'll see that I have a hundred or more paintings on flowers, and you can just paint to your heart's content on flower videos. I have hundreds of videos on flowers, or at least a hundred, I would say, close to it. Uh, maybe you want to paint um, homes, houses, architecture. I have another 20, 30, 40, 50 uh, videos like this. 
So whatever you like to paint, you just type in my name, uh, Seascapes, like Chris Petrie, Seascapes, you'll see I've done a hundred of those or more on my channel. You can go back into my archives again and research those. Have lots of fun. And then if you're just following along every week, I'm doing all of those uh, videos, those subject matters on a consistent basis. So I'm always doing flower paintings. I'm always doing seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes. I'm always doing flower paintings. I'm doing uh, portrait painting, figure painting, um, you know, all these different things, architecture, um, fun stuff like uh, just doing practice compositions on different textures, shadows, um, different things like that. So we're always doing interesting things here. Stay close, stay tuned with me here, and you'll be really learning watercolor at a real advanced level. And um, if you're just beginning and you're just starting out in watercolor, it's really beneficial that you watch all of my videos because you'll be learning all the time new things, new vocabulary, learning about all the different things that we work with, colors, washes, techniques, methods, different subject matter. So I also have Extreme Beginner series videos on my channel. Stick close to those if you're just starting out. Those will be the videos that really help you a lot if you're just starting out because I'm kind of doing more simplified versions of what we do here on more of our advanced style uh, videos and uh, compositions and paintings that we do here on my uh, normal, uh, uh, you know, advanced style paintings. So in any case, uh, hope you're uh, enjoying this video. We're going to continue on here. We'll finish up with the painting. I think we have another half an hour to go and we'll be completed with this. You'll see how much fun we have getting the rest of the washes in, the trees, the foliage. We'll do the chimney. We'll do some clapboard siding. We'll do some shadows on the house. You'll see how beautifully this comes along. All right, so I'll be right back in just a minute. Okay, let's have fun. All right, we're having a lot of fun here. You can kind of see the powerful darks here that we did on this uh, first um, run of uh, our a la prima method, which is getting in the darks first. You can see how beautiful that really kind of sets the whole tone for the rest of the painting. You have your darks in, they're all set. Let's get uh, back mixing here and we'll get the rest of the uh, shadows and the trees and the foliage and the grass completed. Um, so what I like to do next is sort of look at this and see where we can put our shadows in next. Um, so we know, uh, again, I'm gonna take my phone and move it down here. You can kind of see the picture now on the right hand, upper right hand side of the video. And I'm gonna take the colors that I've already used before and not really vary or change too much what I've already been using. I wanna to stick to the same colors. The only thing is I'm gonna make them a little, you know, a little different. Maybe, I mean, as far as same colors, but just change the, I'm gonna add some yellow ochre and uh, raw sienna over here on the left hand side for some of these warm shadows in here. And then I'll add some greens to that and some blue, cerulean blue, and maybe even some French ultramarine blue, and then some more gold color. So we have like a goldish green color, and then maybe some more blue. And that should be fine. Let's get some of that in. And this here is where I put the shadows. a little bit darker up here, so I'll pick up some of that darker dark we had over there. And we'll put that up top here underneath the uh, underside of the soffits of this beautiful foyer entrance uh, area here. And I'll just go around my light. I want to make sure I keep my light maybe. Um, cerulean blue. Let's make sure we get plenty of blue in there. And that's the shadowing underneath that entrance foyer and you can see it's pretty dark and we also have shadows underneath our our gable roof areas where we have our trim let's get that right in there 
And the same thing up here, we have shadows underneath the rake trim, like that. And we'll do another pass here with some more shadowing there. I can take that and add a little blue just to make sure I'm getting some blue in there. Just have fun with the colors, don't worry about it. If we're keeping the colors harmonized and using a lot of the same colors over and over again, it's going to look better. So I don't want to kind of start changing too many colors now. I'm going to stick with what we've already used before and just continue with that. So you can kind of see now we have our shadowing underneath our gables here, the gable trim. We need some shadowing underneath the uh, eaves of the roof, like this, which is across here. You paint right over the windows, like that. The same over here. You paint right over the... Paint right over everything, right underneath the, the uh, trim there. And you leave that white trim underneath the roof area. Can you see how I did that? I left that white trim all the way through here. All the way through here, I left that white trim and I painted the shadows underneath that trim because that's the actual trim boards that are right underneath the roof edge. And then you have underneath that your um, soffits, which are where the vents are for the roof to have air to breathe underneath. Okay, so now you have your shadows pretty much all set and doing really well. Um, another thing we can do is we could take, right now, we can take some purple and mix it up with our cerulean blue up here, like this, then add a little bit of that mixture of different uh, greens and blues and browns and grays, all that. Mix it up with that purple. Make that purple like a muddy looking purple. That's going to be our shadows on the front of the house here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to splash on our shadows first and then mix it around. And what I'm doing is I'm looking, I'm looking at the photograph and seeing where the shadows are. And that's where I'm splashing my paint on so that I can get it on there. And then over here too. And we already have it over here, so I'll add a little more purple there. We could add some purple everywhere. Then I take my water, take some water, clean off the brush, check off some water, and then use a damp brush and just kind of scrub around with a damp brush the shadows like this. Just kind of tap. You can even tap with your finger a little bit. These are the shadows of the trees above up here, which we're going to paint in in just a minute. And if you just get those shadows in, you're really going to see how good that looks. Even mix in a little bit of gold with those shadows. Splash it on if you have to. If you don't feel comfortable splashing, then just kind of put it on quickly with your brush and then like this and then just dance your brush around the paper. couple of limb shapes which are you know like you do a couple limb limb shapes like that okay a couple of shadows over here as well a couple of shadows down here along the steps of the house You 
can always take a tissue and lighten up a few spots if you think you've gone too dark. You can always blot up a little bit of paint. But I think that looks good. Now we can move our phone out of the way here. We're going to start to, let's get our chimney in here because we don't want to wait till the last minute to do that. We have to do that now. So that's going to be brown, alizarin crimson. It's going to be like a brick red, maybe um, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre or uh, raw sienna. And let's get our chimney going here. And I carefully get our chimney painted in here. Then you might get a little French ultramarine blue here, a little darker underneath the corbeling of the chimney up top here. And uh, a little more, maybe some more alizarin crimson for the uh, chimney pots. Like that, good enough. And a little bit of red in the roof here, why not? Take some of this red and move it around. You have your chimney that has red in it. Take a little bit of that red and just, trust me, Move a little bit of that red around the whole painting. Get it into some of the shadow areas we just put in there. This is what you call really <laughs> working fast and saying to yourself, oh, I just added a red chimney to this painting. I can't just add a red chimney and not have that red color mixed throughout the painting because that's going to look really off. Um, it's going to look uh, like it's not harmonized with the rest of the painting. So that, that's why I just went around really quickly and uh, added some of that red as many places as I thought I could add it where it's not going to cause an issue. And I think it works out good now. All right, it looks perfect. Now let's uh, get our some trees and foliage, our fall foliage next. I'm gonna upscale or upsize my brush to a number 12 Da Vinci Maestro brush. You can see how large this is. This is a large round brush. Perfect for our trees and uh, limbs and things like that around this house make it a lot easier for us to paint these full colors around this painting um, with a large brush like this. You don't want to, you wouldn't want to start taking a brush that's kind of, you know, kind of like small like this and try to paint all these trees and things like that with a small brush like this. You want to definitely use a larger brush like this. So this is the largest brush, uh, brush I've used so far in this painting and let's start working with it and see how it pans out, but I think it's going to look good. So I'm going to take the brush, get some water, get some of these greens in here, golds and greens, a little bit of the lizard and crimsons too. So we have some, and then I'm just going to take it and just kind of move it around like so, circular fashion, like this. Maybe get some dark brown in here some blue, French ultramarine blue, darks. Maybe get a couple of the darks under here, darker under the underside of the trees. Um, these are fall colors, so I'm gonna splash on some of that yellow. Like that. So 
some greens up here. Sap green. Like that. Okay. I fill in the corners over here and over here, so I don't want that to be, I don't want that to be like white paper on the corners of the paintings here. I want to fill that in completely. And then as I get over here, I scrub around in a circular fashion, like this. You can finger paint too, a little bit, tap around. Like that. Blot up around the chimney maybe, if you want to. Again, we're having fun here. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green, a little bit of a darker darks underneath here, a little bit of purple too. Like that. Splash a little bit. Then we get our sap green. Yellow ochre. And we're going to do our foreground here. Then I'll just take my brush and kind of splash over here like this. Do a couple, a little bit of a, like that. Splashes over here. Then maybe I'll get some brown, French ultramarine blue, green. More brown, and then I'm going to start doing some tree trunks over here. Okay, indications of some tree trunks here, like this. And then you want to add some tree limbs like that. And then what I'll do is I'll use my fine needlepoint brush next. Here. And then we'll kind of see that there's some trees back here. that. And we'll do our tree limbs.
and this makes all the difference in the world as you do your tree limbs and things like this with this fine needlepoint brush. Then I'll go back and work with maybe, maybe my uh, round brush here. And we'll do our steps here. I add a little bit of green to those shadows just to make it feel like it's sort of tying in with the green trees we, we kind of added. And we have to let this dry now. All these, um, all the foliage that we made around, the, we kind of tried to keep with the idea of the painting, where you see all those trees, all those limbs and branches and leaves. We tried to keep that same feel in this painting. So once we got our house completed 100%, then we added in our trees around the outside edges. And of course we used our sap green, raw umber, yellow ochre, and some burnt umber. And uh, we kind of were, ab were able to get that beautiful autumn kind of feel to this. And um, at that point, once we're done with this, we actually, the last thing we'll do is get some blue <clears throat> sky wash in here. But the main point is we have to let this dry now 100% complete. This is not any, uh, at this point now, we have to let this dry again 100% complete. Use a blow dryer and dry it till it's completely dry. Or you could let it sit for like two hours or whatever, and that, that should be fine. And uh, then we'll uh, go in and get some blue sky wash, and that'll be the completion of the painting. So, and we'll maybe do a touch more work with the uh, clapboard. Let's actually do that right now. Let's get a little bit of the clapboard siding in here. So what we have to do here is just get a couple of uh, lines going this way. Dry off some of the paint off the brush so that it's very light and very subtle. We don't want it really... Get some very subtle lines in here. Make sure you go around these posts. Actually, I'm just painting over those posts right now. I shouldn't do that. We could fix that later, though. A couple of horizontal lines with our needlepoint brush here. So you see how fine that line is? And you just put in some lines on the uh, siding. And that should be good. A couple over here, too. Over here, you have some up here. And there you have it. Okay, so now. I sometimes will add a little bit of shadow at the top here, across the uh, window, here too. Add a little bit of shadow there and there. I usually do that. And that looks pretty good. Okay, let it, let's let let this dry 100%. And then we'll come back and we'll add blue sky in there and we should be completed. Okay, we just took a little break. I used my blow dryer and I basically um, uh, dried off the entire painting now so that everything is 100% completely dry. You can see I can put my hand on it and it's completely 100% dry. That's the key here because we're going to do the sky washes and if you do the sky washes you have to have this 100% completely dry. 
Next thing I'll do is I'll take my water, which is a little murky. You can kind of see that's a little bit uh, muddy looking. Let's get fresh, clean water because we're going to do a sky wash. We want our water to be really crystal clear and, and clean. So I put that in there. And um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a, a flat brush here. This is my um, uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company um, flat brush, and it's actually uh, synthetic, which means it doesn't hold as much water. So that's to our advantage right now. If you don't want to have as much water on your brush hairs, in your watercolor brushes, if you use synthetic brushes, you'll find that you'll have uh, a little bit less water um, in your brush hairs than if you're using like sable brushes or natural hair brushes. So that's just a little uh, advantage you can have once in a while if you just need to um, scale back how much water is in your brush if you want to. It just adds a little bit of more dryness to your brush when you're working. Next thing I do is I take a, a swatch like this, a piece of watercolor paper, and this is like a paper where I did something else on the one side and I use it, reuse it again. So I'm trying to always be frugal about my watercolor paper. So if I paint something here and I don't want to, you know, I don't necessarily need to put this in a frame or to use it, I, use, I save it for another time. So now we're going to use it here um, and we're going to actually, let's mix up a couple different sky color washes and see what looks good. Let's see, let cobalt blue. Let's take some cobalt blue. Let's see how that looks. What do you think? Cobalt blue for the sky wash? Um, let's try something different. Maybe we'll go with cerulean blue. Let's try cerulean blue and we'll see what we think here. Let's. Hmm. That looks pretty good. So what do you think? Cerulean blue is going to look better than the uh, cobalt blue? We did use cerulean in our mixes here, in our shadows. So cerulean might be the, the right way to go. So let's use cerulean blue. I think that's going to be the better wash versus using a cobalt blue, which we really didn't use anywhere in here. So that's the key. If you can harmonize your colors and always think about harmonizing your colors within your painting. So if you've already used cerulean blue, which we did use, and you can see it right here, here, all through the windows, the shadows. We use a lot of cerulean blue in this painting. So that would only make sense that we would want to use cerulean blue for our sky wash versus trying to use a cobalt blue, which is a beautiful blue, but we didn't really use it anywhere in the painting. Although you could, if you do want to use a cobalt blue for this sky wash, you could take cobalt blue and mix it in on top of these washes here here and there to kind of make sure that you have it all the way through your painting all around. But the easier way to go is just to use some cerulean blue and we kind of have it all uh, set up and ready to go. So let's do that. Let's use some cerulean blue here and let's do some light sky washes like this. So I just take my cerulean blue like so. Fresh clean water. Just like that. And then we just try to get it. And I'm just lightly putting it on damp brush, so I rinse the brush off, take off the water on the uh, sponge, go down, I grab some cerulean blue, and lightly put it onto the paper. Like that. Same thing here. 
cerulean blue. I smooth it and mix that wash right over to the shadows. So I kind of mix and mingle. And then here where the here where the um, siding is, there's no shadows, then I, I wouldn't want to kind of mix across there into the siding on the on the um, house. So that's pretty much. And I think we have a completed painting. I, I think you're, you've had fun here with us. You've enjoyed this painting. The sky wash really makes everything just blend together beautifully. We used, again, the cerulean blue, which we already used in a lot of our shadow areas and other mixes within our painting. So I really think this turns out really, really nicely. And um, we could do a few more little details. I think the steps here, we wanted to do a little bit of a shadow underneath the steps here like that, and then another one under this here. Like that. And these are the steps that lead up to the front entry door. And then we can also put a shadow along there, so that kind of just makes the door of the front entry of the house a little more um, interesting. You could take a touch of white, titanium white, like this. You could take a touch of titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre in there. So I would put a little bit of yellow ochre in the top of the tube of the yellow, uh, titanium white, and then you could add a little white handle here for the door. That might look good. Um, you might recapture a few whites here where the uh, windows are with the white. Just making a suggestion. Sometimes we paint over things and then we say, oh wow, I can actually, wow, I can actually go back and use a little bit of titanium white with a touch of yellow ochre and I can recapture some of those shadows, or some of those lights, I should say. Same thing here. And here too. Doesn't have to be everywhere, but you could regain some of your lights that you might have, and some of those are shadows, so don't, don't worry about it if you have some shadows that are going over things, that's fine. This over here looks fine, we could do this. This might be good to do one there, just a little bit there. Maybe a little bit of a highlight on top of the chimney caps, like that. That might look good. Um, maybe up here. I don't know if I like those dark shingles there. That might look better. But overall, we don't want to overwork this. That, that can be a real problem, overworking paintings. Um, I see a little bit of a shadow that we need over here. Right, th right there. Um, we might need a little bit of a white trim here. All I'm really doing is taking a little bit of the white, titanium white with a touch of yellow ochre in there, and just looking around and seeing where I can kind of make a few um, lights that would look kind of good. 
but not overdoing it. But I think that looks pretty good overall. We could even do a couple of siding for our clapboard siding. You could put a couple of white highlights. That might look good here and there, just a few. Over here, I painted over my column. So if you have a column here and you, by accident, you added some siding over your column, that can really be an issue. It won't read right if you don't have that column strictly white paint. There could be some shadows on there, but you wouldn't want siding coursing, like the uh, the lines of the, si the clapboard siding, you wouldn't want them going across this column here that I create that we have created here on this painting for the, to hold up this roof up here. So that's where we can kind of clear up a few issues we had when we first were painting our clapboard siding on there. And uh, I think that looks good. Maybe we'll make our light here. Let's maybe take our light, a little more uh, yellow ochre and titanium white. And we'll make our light here. Then we'll take some of the um, black, like that, some black mixed in there. And we'll put a little black um, for our light there. All right, I hope we all had fun here. This is a real fun painting to do. We'll be back soon to do more paintings, just like this one, and even more exciting paintings as well. Um, any questions, please leave them in the comments section. We always have uh, interesting fun in the comments sections. People ask questions. Uh, many of you, thank you so much for all your encouraging words, your kindness. I've never seen so many kind comments in my life. Everyone is so happy all the time and, you know, giving me uh, a lot of encouragement, which keeps me pumped and stoked to keep making great paintings for you and doing tutorials every week, week after week, month after month, and year after year. So this is the painting. I just took off our tape here so you can kind of see a little bit of a border around it, which looks a little better. And then even if we take our mat, like this and put it over you can kind of see how nicely it looks and that could be a beautiful finished painting like that in a frame it might be somebody's house maybe your house maybe you have a house that looks a lot like this one i wish i lived i live in a house that's really nice it's a brick house though and it's beautiful i love bricks this is really nice though clapboard siding looks absolutely phenomenal and uh so anyway Let's uh, come back again and do some more paintings together. Thank you so much again for coming by, painting with me here, and um, we'll see you soon. Okay, happy painting, everybody. Enjoy the watercolor journey, and um, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.